I have one stream to beat the fight caves and get a fire cape completely from scratch as an ultimate Iron Man on old school runescape. I can't trade with other players and I can't use the bank. On top of that, I will also be chunk lock and I unlock one extra chunk every 10,000 XP. I gave myself 24 hours to prepare for the caves and the timer starts now. When speedrunning a fire cape, the usual start of an account is to go directly to the wilderness and get 44 prayer, to get it out of the way while being low combat level to drastically lower the chance of getting killed by another player. But I am currently stuck in Lumbridge, so I quickly need to get enough XP to get out of this chunk. And yes, you're gonna have to look at my face for this, it's very hard to verify that I actually played 24 plus hours straight without streaming it. To start off, I'm going to be pickpocketing some men, not only to get coins for a better axe, but also get to 5 thieving, as thieving is a requirement for the lost tribe, and at 5, I unlock cake stuff. But when I get low HP, I use the time to regenerate while woodcutting. Woodcutting and fire making is a tried and true method of getting a lot of XP early. When unlocking new chunks, I will restrict myself to any adjacent chunks or any chunks that I can travel through via an in-world method, which means no minigame teleports, etc. This brings us to the canoe stations. One such station exists in Lumbridge and takes us all the way to Edgeville. In the grand scheme, this only saves us one chunk, but 10,000 XP early on makes a big difference. To reach Edgeville, we will need 42 woodcutting, and a Along with all the logs we will be burning during that grind, we will have enough chunks unlocked to get to the next goal. The plan for this account was simple, get 44 prayer and then camp the 4th of dungeon for grubby keys as quickly as possible. But to open the gate that unlocks the grubby chest, you also need 57 thieving. Which brings us to our next goal, Hosidius. Hosidius houses not only the fruit stalls that will take us from 25 to 57 thieving, but there's also cake stalls to get us from 5 to 25. Plus, the fourth dungeon is right next to it, giving us two birds with one stone. This means Edgeville will have to wait. Three and a half hours later, the woodcutting grind is done, giving us 110,000 XP, or 11 chunks to unlock. The reason why we're going Hosidius first and not Prayer is because we need to keep our chunks in mind. Going Prayer now would only unlock a total of 4 chunks, but would cost around 11, leaving us extremely starved. On my way to Hosidius, I quickly did X marks the spot for 400 ranged XP. At Ocidius I went straight for the cake stalls to get 25 thieving and after almost dying I got the dog stuck behind and it was smooth sailing. As some of you might know, to steal from the fruit stalls you also need 15% Ocidius favor. So after the cake stalls were done I went straight to pushing the plows. The plows are the only way to get from 0 to 5% favor but it's extremely slow. So for the next 10% I decided to make fertilizer. Easy considering it's right next to me but I would need some starting GP to buy the compost. This brings us to the canoe. I unlocked both Edgeville and Barbarian Village. Took the canoe over to Edgeville, completely forgetting that I could just take it to the village instead. Fine, don't matter. I went down into the stronghold, completely safe, thanks to all the cake I now have. Two-factor authentication! Oh no. After some minor setbacks, I got the 10k GP, and while here, I went for 70 mining, a lost tribe requirement. Back to Sidious to get the favor, I realized I'd never been an ultimate Iron Man before, and had to figure out how to get around without a bank. Once the favor was at 15%, I stole from the market stall until I had enough XP to unlock one more chunk, as I was completely out of them at this point. I got the XP and unlocked the square to the east, as it contains the house with two stalls. Running between these two stalls is actually one tick faster than stealing from one, which makes it 20% more XP an hour. On top of that, you also have the chance of getting a strange fruit as a drop when stealing, which refreshes your run energy. This lets you keep running forever during the grind. To get 57 thieving, I would need 200k XP. The rate I was getting during thieving the stalls was 41k an hour, meaning at max efficiency, I would be here for at least 4.5 hours. Also, moving the inventory is a new thing I'm trying, and I'm really starting to like it. You can do it by holding Alt, and then just dragging it wherever you want. At the end of the thieving grind, 14 hours remain. I also made sure to keep 3 red berries and save up as much strange fruit as I could because next on the list was goblin diplomacy and room mysteries. Luckily, I didn't have to unlock any new chunks to get to the dies. Red berries came from the stalls, there's an onion spawn on the second floor of the Lumbridge General Store, and wild leaves were on the way to the village. With 20 chunks from the thieving grind, we now have enough to unlock not only all the chunks needed for the quest, but also all the chunks needed for prayer. So once all the strange fruit was used up and the two quests were done, I saved one chunk by going through soul wars to Ferox instead of running through the wilderness. Luckily, at Ferox, I could also store the GP I had. Then it was off to the boneyard. 
prayer is very simple. Pick up a big bone, hop world, repeat. Once full inventory, run over to the chaos altar for big prayer XP. Once done, I would use the Samurak wine to get sent back to Lumbridge, recharge my run energy and health, then minigame teleport back to Ferox, which I could do now that the chunk was unlocked. The length of this grind really came down to how long it took to world hop. I tried to start the stream at a point where the prayer grind would happen at around 3am in the morning, hopefully lowering the world hop times, but in the end, the time it took to hop was still 8 seconds, meaning that a full inventory of bones would take around 4 minutes. The skeletons would also pose a problem, since they could easily kill me if I was unlucky. Sometimes I just had to leave early, and since I could only use the minigame teleport every other trip, I either just ran back if my HP was high enough, or took the cano back if I needed to heal to full. Prayer was now done, with 10 hours left. The grind got us enough chunks to unlock Gnome's stronghold, which is needed for agility, another Lost Tribe requirement. And with agility done, there was now everything I needed for the Lost Tribe. On the way, I also made sure to pick up my money from the Enclave and bought bows, arrows and chaps from Varrock, which I would later use to get my range to 30. I also found a lit candle on the top floor of the Varrock sword shop, and I didn't even have to use a torch on a range to get it. Mm -hmm. I started Lost Tribe and I also stopped on my way to the Goblin Village to get the range training done now to save a bit of time. Seagulls are a good early training method since they have negative defense, guaranteeing a hit. I also employed some peak efficiency remote desktop when going to the bathroom for no XP waste. I finished off the Lost Tribe and went back to Ferox Enclave since I needed a bit of starting cash to afford bone bolts. Luckily, the steel plate leg spawn is part of the chunks I needed for prayer, so I did a few inventories of that. Spent 20k on bone bolts, then trekked over to Forthos with 6 hours and 45 minutes left on the clock, 18 hours into the stream. So, Forthos. I'm going to be killing temple spiders, as they have incredibly low defense, decent HP, and a 1 in 100 chance to drop a grubby key. Grubby keys can open the grubby chest, which contains a lot of supplies that I will need on my fire cape attempt. Most importantly, prayer and super restore potions. I am confident in my fight caves. Recently, I did on my group Iron Man, which has 55 ranged. It took around 5 hours, and I used 1 prayer potion total, but I could log out at any point, go to bed, wake up, come back. Here, I'm awake for 24 hours at the point I enter the caves, and any break I take will just make me more tired. I want to play it as safe as possible, so I need at least one full prayer potion before going in. Using Changer Berries is sadly not an option. Prayer potions are a 1 in 6.6 .6 chance out of the grubby chest, and super stores have 2 1 out of 20 rolls and 1 additional 1 out of 20 roll per open, because it's on both the food and potion table. With the 6 hours left, I should have about 6 keys to use, if luck is slightly on my side. I showed my enormous set of skills by instantly dying to the spiders, missing a flick, but after running back, there weren't too many any issues besides a few more deaths. I want at least 51 range before going into the case, as this raises my max hit to a total of 12. I get one more max hit at 55, but there wasn't enough time left to get that. But aside from range, I also need to get HP. Now, health isn't extremely important in the fight caves if you play it perfectly, but I could already tell I was gonna play anything but perfect. The majors can max hit a 49. This means for every HP level I get, I will have a 2% higher chance of living if I accidentally take a hit. Also, you know, safe spawning these spiders would be a lot easier if it weren't for these bots running through on every world pulling them away. The grind actually got me way more GP than I thought, so as I was getting close to 50 ranged, I decided to unlock all the way down to Narda to quickly snag green dehyde van braces and chaps. On top of this, considering the time I had left, I felt safe going for 20 defense as well, since it would allow me to purchase a studded leather body, as well as getting a Mithril Medhelm, since Medhelms don't come with a range accuracy decrease. Seeing as I had more than enough money, I decided to swap from the spiders to some baby dragons. The dragons have a slightly higher drop rate of the grubby keys and less HP, albeit a bit more defense, but I did some calculations and I would average more keys an hour on the dragons, but less XP, that's why I didn't swap earlier. As the 6th key drop, I decided to go open the chest. The first chest was completely garbage. What I'm looking for again are prayer potions and super restores. Second or third chest also contained nothing of value, nor did the fourth chest. By the fifth chest, I was getting a bit nervous. I have one key left and I do not have a single prayer potion. At this point, even if I was to get the drop, I wasn't sure if it would be enough to carry me through in this state. But the sixth chest comes in with the clutch two prayer potions as well as a super restore. I basically hit the jackpot in this final chest. So I also bought 11,000 bone bolts because I don't even want to think about running out of bolts. 
My last attempt on my group Iron Man, I had 50 bolts at the end of Jad, having to pick up bolts during the actual fight. Not something I wanted to do right now. So, let me tell you a secret about fire cave challenges. In the end, they all come down to how good you are at the caves. Now, I'm not Randy level, okay, but I'm pretty confident in my abilities. Because what the fire caves really are is just a big puzzle. If you sit down and look at the waves one by one and plan them out, nothing should take you by surprise. And then it's just up to your skills to properly set up the waves and then get into the motion of flicking. On my rune-like notes, I have every wave written down in detail what will happen. And if I get uncertain, I will cross-check with the wave itself on the wiki. The caves are on a set rotation of 15 different possible ones. As with most low-level fire caves, I will be going with rotation 2. It's what I've practiced and it's what I made the notes for. Now, I have two rules in the fight caves. Number one, never assume that the major is dead. Even if it looks like your next hit will kill it, it most likely won't. And if you stop flicking because you think it's over, you will instantly get slammed for a 49. Number two, play it safe when setting up scary waves. This is the reason I wanted prayer potions. Setting up waves having to flick mages can be deadly if you even get one thing wrong. And I'm very tired at this point, so no risks shall be taken. In this cave, I will be avoiding one tick prayer flicking like the plague. It's too intensive for me to keep up, considering a single mage kill will take around 5 minutes, and I'm prone to miss one or two in that time considering my state. So instead, I have setups that will let me efficiently lazy flick. In essence, if you activate your prayer, the tick before the mob attacks and also click the enemy in that time, your prayers will activate the next tick and line up with the monster's attack. From there, it's very simple. I look when my hit splash on the mob appears, then click my prayers, and then I click them off when I see my overheads flick on. So, as expected, I messed up a bit on the early waves and ended up losing a lot of prayer, but eventually I got in the zone and followed my notes like a good boy. Before the mage comes out, there's really not much going on, some cool setups here and there, but on wave 31, it's about to get real. Six minutes. Six minutes for one mage. That is way worse than I expected with just one lower max hit from my test run. But maybe it was just a crazy outlier. It wasn't looking too good though. I noticed even trying to focus on a single spot for extended periods of time, I kinda just zoned out. My vision got like blurry. But but it's all good. Six minutes per mage, 33 mages left means that I was spending at least three hours more on the mages alone. So, about HP. For every one hit point I have, there's a 2% higher chance that I live if I get hit. 43 HP means an 86% chance to live. And while I was not feeling extremely safe, it felt good knowing that statistically I could take a hit and live, even though it was not something I was going for. And while I did have a few scares, moments of getting frustrated at myself, I f***ed it, I f***ed it, I f***ed it. Oh my god. The next 20 waves went by kind of fast. I mean, it did take two hours, but once you get in the rhythm, it's, it's kind of nice. You know, when I first saw challenges like these, I always thought they seemed impossible. My first fire cave was with a pre-nerf blowpipe with like 80s base combat, so the thought of sitting and flicking a single mage for 5 minutes each was so wild, it blew my mind. Settled, Rendy, Exile, these people seemed so out of reach, but this really shows that practice and hard work does pay off. In the end, if you put your mind- No! I suck! Idiot! Idiot reason number one. Second rule of the caves was to not risk flicking when setting up dangerous waves. I flicked, I died, figure. Idiot reason number two. I have brews. I can just drink a brew and add rapid restart to my quick prayers preset and I will stay at 52 HP, well above the 49 HP that a mage can hit, meaning that I will live even if they max hit me. Oh well challenge over I guess. After streaming constant efficient runescape for 27 hours and being awake for 30, it was time to go to bed. But to show that I ain't no fraud and I can actually beat the caves with this account, I of course went back the next day after 17 hours of sleep to do it again. By the way, 17 hours of sleep? Doesn't that sound too much? I was only awake for like 30 hours. Well, anyway, this was like the most chill fight caves I've ever done. I did have some misflick scares, but thanks to the bruise, I never ran at the risk of dying. So on the classic trap every single mob behind the ranger wave and pray to god the bat dies in one hit, the bat did not die in one hit. 
If this was a Jangaberry run, it would have ended right there. Luckily, I had been really good on Prayer this entire run, so basically I had a full restore left. So, Jad is probably the easiest part about this, but the problem is not Jad. It's the nerves, the cold, clammy hands, and every single what-if thought running through your head. With Sound On, the mage attack from Jad is very easy to deal with, since its sound cues come once every tick, so on the deeper sound, you just enable mage. The range attack, on the other hand, has no sound until after it's cast. So what I do is I enable range at a time where I think it's the tick before the hit, which I sometimes do too early, but never turn it off until I hear the sound cue. Luckily, Jad can be practiced easily thanks to the Jad challenges, so I spent some time on my main there the other day and really got it down. The scariest part of course is when the healers spawn, since they have to swap to long range and back while still flicking. So just to play it safe for the healers, I just left the prayers on. Then it's as easy as safe spotting the healers, going back out and finishing off Jad. For a total time of 4 hours and 47 minutes. Even though I did not get the cape within one stream, I still got the cape with the stats I prepared in those 24 hours. And I guess that's good enough copium for me.